Isaiah 25 to 1 to EKJV, O Lord, Thou art my God, I will exalt Thee, I will praise Thy name. For Thou hast done wonderful things, Thy counsels of older faithfulness and truth. For Thou hast made of a city and heap, of a defense city a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city. It shall never be built. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee, the city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. For thou hast been a strength to the poor, a strength to the needy in his distress, a refuge from the storm, a shadow from the heat, when the blast of the terrible ones is as. A storm against the wall. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as the heat in a dry place. Even the heat with the shadow of a cloud, the branch of the terrible one shall be brought low. And in this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things. Good to us, is ever fit for with us all along. A feast of wines on the leaves, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the leaves well refined. And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people, and the veil that is spread over all nations. We can have go into the day's business straight away. There is none like you, there will never be any like us. We thank you for the miracle of sleeping and waking. We thank you for this beautiful day, a day which you have made, which we shall enjoy some week's life. We thank you for all that you did for us last week. Thank you for what you have been doing since the beginning of the year. He will swallow up death in victory, and the Lord D.O.D. will wipe away tears from off all faces. And the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth, for the Lord has spoken it. that your words will take root in our Over. hearts and bear fruit at us in Jesus' name. Blessed be your name. Thank you. The Lord God Almighty has a track record of being a comforter to the comfortless and mourners, a refuge to the oppressed, a shelter to the homeless and security to the insecure. In fact, to whatever you want him to be or represent in your life, he is more than able. this morning is who is If you are standing by, if you are married and you are standing by your spouse, and somebody said, Just like he was the great provider for the Israelites in form of manna, crossing through the wilderness to the land of promised Canaan land and ultimately displaced the inhabitants in order to make room for the new owners. And when we come to the Almighty, the spiritual. What does God represent in your life? Who is it to you? In the Bible, in the scripture, the scripture says, as you are disposed to me. What he did then, life, he is still more than able to do today, Hallelujah. even in higher dimension. An all-encompassing assurance God, meeting everyone at their points of need. Who is it to you? That's what God talking. Somebody will say, oh, it's my provider. Is my source, is my sustainer. Somebody, another person will say, is my shepherd. I shall not want. He meets all my needs. Another one will say, is my security. Why are you talking now? Another one will say, is my life. 
Exodus 36 to 5 to 6 KJV, And they spake unto Moses, saying, The people bring much more than enough for the service of the work, which the Lord commanded to make. And Moses gave commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, The husband, the wife, what God said to the husband might be different from what he gave to the wife. Let neither man nor woman make any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. So the people were restrained from bringing dot dot the Bible says, Let this mind be in you, which I say. I am one of the, I am, I am one of the testifiers to the healing of the Most High God. So if somebody was to ask me also, I can confidently tell anybody. That is everything to me. The mind of the consciousness of the fact that God is more than enough for you and all that you want Him to be. He is a present help in times of need. Philippians to 5 KJV, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Psalms 46 to 1 to 5 KJV God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Some other people, men are their gods. They, they, they look up to them as God. Oh, is in a very exalted position. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. There's only half a man can do. But with God, <laughs> no limits. God but is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. Who is God Almighty to you? And what does He represent in your life? In the middle of a storm in the Gulf of Guinea, down my area of West Africa. In the Atlantic Ocean, and the boat, capsized, the boat capsized, and every crew in the ship died. They Your answer so and disposition towards him will determine the appropriate man. answer. Do have a fruitful week, AOD. Bottom most part of the ship, in the bottom most part of the ship, underneath the Atlantic Ocean, God created a space for him for three days. He was breathing. That space, the water did not cover it. Under the Atlantic Ocean. He survived for three days and the company were restless. They were saying, let's go and rescue this ship. This ship has sunk underneath the ocean. Let's go and send, let's help send help. Peradventure somebody might be alive. Who could have been prompting the company officials to go and rescue this ship? But where are you at? Because somebody God loved was underneath the ocean and he was still alive. Hallelujah. Can any man under the planet earth do that? No man. He made him to survive inside the hell hole of the ship with a little space where there was air and he was breathing for three days. If you ask that kind of man, who is God to him? He will tell you, he's my deliverer. He delivered me. He sustained me in the belly of the ocean. Some other thing guys were trying to stay away from my country here, somewhere to Europe. They entered into the into the bunk of the what do you call it of the ship where the engines were. And they were staying there just to stay away, to run away from their country. And eventually they were detected by the engineers. And they told the captain that, hey, these guys are here, they are hiding, they are supposed to enter illegally into the ship. 
And what did that do? He said, go and throw them out. And he brought them out. So these new guys, inside the Atlantic, in the midst of the ocean, in the midst of the ocean, they threw him and threw them out. Eventually, after about three days, two of them died. Thanks for joining the ship. I mean, on the guys. sea because they were hanging onto a raft on top of the ocean. The ship had gone, and they were seeing ships passing by all over the place, but none of them came near them. And they were eating live shrimps to survive. Eventually, their stomach couldn't stand it. Two of them died. The other one that did not eat the shrimps that was hungry but refrained from eating the shrimps in the sea. They were catching the shrimps inside. He survived. A ship was passing by and they picked him up. They returned him back. Who made him to survive? Who made him to survive three days and three nights in the Atlantic Ocean? Hallelujah. God Almighty. So if you ask that guy, who is God to you? What will he say to you? He will say he was my savior. He was my deliverer, and he's still my deliverer. So I'm asking you this morning, <laughs> what is the miracle that God has done in your life? Who is God to you? Hallelujah. I've told you, he's my healer. Anytime I need some things here and there, he makes provisions for me. When I go out, he secures me. He dignifies my life. He honors my life. So who is God to me? He's my everything. Hallelujah. So each individual will be, answer, will be answerable to the question from time to time in your life, whether you believe it or not. The challenges of life will question you. Do you have God in your life? Do you remember the sons of Sceva? He said, Jesus I know. Paul I know. <laughs> who are you? They could not answer. The demon had to beat the hell out of them. So if somebody asks you today, who is God to you? Well, I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. He doesn't exist. Is that so? <laughs> That's what you hear some people, especially now who have, who have abandoned churches. Who have abandoned churches, who have abandoned God and gone after money, technology, and uh, whatever you can imagine. They have gone after shadows. So if you ask them, I don't know him, I don't know, I don't need him. We have technology, we have money, we are comfortable. <laughs> oh, God Almighty. He's a merciful God. Yet he is always waiting. But adventure one day they will change their mind for them for him to restore them for him to have mercy upon them you go to their place now they say ah this church this building is for sale churches are for sale they have abandoned god completely they don't even know their children don't even know him anymore But God is not left comfortless. He has not abandoned those people. If they, even if they have abandoned him, he has not abandoned them. He's still hoping that sooner than later, the word of God will reconnect back to them and reconnect them back to him. Hallelujah. That's why some of us are on the system. So they can hear the word of God and recalibrate and change their minds and return back to him. In those times, they have banned Bibles, in schools, they are buying prayers. And even if you see people evangelizing on the street, their law enforcement will come after them and begin to arrest the guy. You look at those crimes. What do you see? 100% Satanism. 100% Satan has taken over those crimes of those nations. They have been sold a lie. They have been deceived. And they have followed deception. And what follows after that? You see so many disasters happening locally. They might seemingly be 
financially reasonably okay. But I always say, look at the underbelly of the underground. It's a disaster. Because they have abandoned the cistern of the fountains of life. The foundation of life, they have abandoned him. They have gone a warring after worthless elements of things of life. But we are praying for them. God will bring them back. Hallelujah. So, I'm asking again, who is God Almighty to you? Let me read some scriptures so you have an idea of who this kind of God is. We discussed the other time of the faithfulness of God, his faithfulness of God. The other time we say, are you faithful? Today we are talking of the omnipotent God, the almighty God. What is his identity? What does he represent in your life, in my life? Hallelujah. What does he represent in your life and in my life? Let's read Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter 25. 25 says, O Lord, thou art my God. Hallelujah. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. O oh Lord, oh my God, I will exalt thee, I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness, defense city, a ruin, a palace of strangers to be no city. It shall never be built. You know, it's God that determines what happens and what does not happen. For instance, if you are the apple of God's eye, whatever decision they make, against you from the kingdom of darkness shall never stand. He will not allow you to stand if you are the apple of God's eye. If you are one of those that is obedient to him, that follow his counsel, that whatever he tells you to do, you do, and you live holy lives, you are not sexually immoral, you are not following men and women or bodies of iniquity, even if sickness wants to come near you, it will make sure that sickness does not stay. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God we are talking about. So, you are the one that will determine what does it represent in your life. Like I said earlier, some people say it does not represent anything. It is nothing to me. Good. No problem. Hallelujah. Hi. <laughs> He will say, no problem. You remember the story of uh, the young people that were going in a car? You all probably read it, and I've said it several They were traveling, they were all drunk. Young, young boys in the 20s, or they're about less than 30, so about five, six of them. They were already filled up in a car, and one of them who came to the house to pick up something, the mother came out without seeing that the daughter was drunk and wanted to examine who had those she was traveling with, going with in the car. She came out, she found that all of them were drunk and they were going to, they were driving. She said, ah, she, she could not stop her daughter. I don't know how some of these parents operate. I don't know. I don't know. In some climbs of the world, I don't know. But in my own climbs of the world, when I, if I was to see those kind of drunk, I would make sure they don't go. If I was one, with the parents that came out to see all of them were drunk like that, I would make sure they don't go. I either get them arrested or seize the key. Anyway, that is not the issue. What I want to get across is that the mother asked the daughter, hey, can you just ask God to go with you? All of you are drunk. You are traveling. You are going some distance. Ask God to go with you. You know what she said to the mother? Because she had abandoned God. He said to the mother, there's no space in the car for God. See, the car is full. All of us are full, except God wants to stay in the trunk of the car. And that's what, who God was to her. To, God was not worthy to stay in the car with them. God was only worthy to stay 
in the trunk of the car, in the boot. <laughs> and of course, you know, God is a, you can't, you can't, you, 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 you can't hold God comfortless. It's not possible. <laughs> he said, game on. You want me to stay in the boot? I'll stay in the boot. No problem. You stay in the car. And of course, you know what happened thereafter. They left on the journey. God accidented. Some assaulted several times. All of them died. And they came, found no one alive. They opened the trunk. After the car, some assaulted several times. There was one crate of egg in the boot of the car where they said, God should stay. Not one egg came out of his shelf. Not one egg was broken. Where was where God stood? They said, go and stay in the trunk, maybe with the eggs. They will stay in the car. Those who stayed in the car died. But the trunk where God was with the egg, not one egg was broken. So I ask again to you. <laughs> I hope you answer like that the young lady answered her mother. Who is God to you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, verse 3, Isaiah 25, verse 3. Therefore shall the strong people glorify thee. The city of the terrible nations shall fear thee. How many of you fear God? If that girl was in fear of God and reverence and honor and dignity for him, she would not have been insultingly saying the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the source of all life, should go and stay in the boot. Okay. Are you also allowing God in your life? Or you are saying God should go and stay in the boys' quarters? Or God go and stay at home while I go out? Instead of going with God wherever you go and let him accompany you, are you also saying, God, hey, wait here at home? I hope not. Five, verse 4 says, For thou hast been a strength to the poor. You know the poor now. Not necessarily the financially poor. Also, they are also included. But spiritually poor. The ones that ones that are hungry for God. A strength to the needy in his distress. A refuge from the storm. A shadow from the heat. When the blast of the terrible ones is as a storm against the wall. Verse 5, thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers. What is the discordant noise of challenges of life that is confronting you right now? God will bring them down and shall have your peace and shall be restored to your original glory and honor and dignity in the name of Jesus. Thou shalt bring down the noise of strangers as a heat in a dry place. Even the heat with the shadow of, of a cloud. The branch of the terrible ones shall be brought low. Hallelujah. Who are those confronting you or threatening your life? That this will happen to you, this will happen to you. Unless you succumb to me, unless you sleep with me, I will not promote you. Unless you do this for me, unless you join their fraternity or their occultic gang, you will not be promoted. Who are those that are threatening you? God is saying to you now, they shall be brought down. Hallelujah. If you align yourself with him. Hallelujah. They shall be brought down. So, what I'm trying to say is that nobody, nobody on the planet had, on this planet earth we are in today, has any right to threaten a child of God. It's beyond them. Anyone that does that has crossed the red line. And they shall be brought low. That's what the Bible is saying here. They shall be brought low. So shall all your enemies be brought low. All those who are gangling up against you, all those who say you will not advance, you will not move forward, all those who say you will not fulfill destiny, God will bring them down. And you will walk over them in the name of Jesus. Victoriously too, in the name of Jesus. 
verse 6, and this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, a fat things of fat things full of marrow of wines on the lees, well refined, and he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast. They are hiding under the shadow of pretenses that they are your friends. They shall be exposed. There shall be no hiding place for your enemies. No matter how much they go after you, there shall be no hiding place for them. But you need to know who this God is to you. It is when you realize the importance of who he is to you, that's when you are able to confront the challenges that are facing you now headlong and overcome it. If you don't know who is it to you, <laughs> those things will continue to be, override you and be on top of you. Remember the scripture says you shall be above only, you will never be below. That means those challenges must be underneath, underneath your feet. You must be on top of them. But it comes with a consciousness and a mindset that I know that my Redeemer lives. My Redeemer, my Savior, my all in all, my source and sustainer. He's not dead, he lives. And he lives forevermore. Hallelujah. So if this consciousness comes unto you, I can tell you, no challenge in life, none will overcome you. None. You will always be on top of them. Hallelujah. Verse 8. I read the last verse there. He will swallow up death in victory for you. Is somebody threatening you with death or one sickness or the other? And they are telling you, hey, this thing will kill you. This thing will kill you. God will swallow it up this morning. In the name of Jesus, and you'll be free from that sickness, you'll be free from that challenge, you'll be free from that threat. In the name of Jesus, God will swallow up that threat, God will swallow up that sickness, God will swallow up that challenge in your life, and you'll be set free. The Bible says that whoever the Son of God sets free is free indeed. You have been set free, and I declare you free permanently for life. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And he, he shall swallow, swallow up death in victory. And the Lord God Almighty will wipe away tears from all faces. And the rebuke of the people shall he take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken it. Hallelujah. You remember the case of Hannah who was barren for years and asking God, Lord, just give me one child, just one child, just one, just one. She cried all night, day in, day out, crying, Lord, just have mercy. Eventually, God wiped away her tears. And she gave birth to one beautiful, bouncing baby boy called Samuel. Hallelujah. But God wiped away her tears. Then of all the abuses he had been facing with uh, the other wife who already had six children. All of it was wiped away. And that one child was bigger than the six children of the other wife that was, that was working her. And she even her son somewhere became the president of Israel for years. Six children could look him in the face. None. <laughs> That's how God will wipe away your tears this morning. He will restore you to your original glory. He will turn around your captivity like Zion. He will change your times and season for good. He will put laughter in your Addendum mouth. kindly press the middle paragraph twice. It will, it will stop for you to read money. after reading press. Once it will continue to the next page it's and repeat so saying till you finish reading God thanks. You. In the name of Jesus. He wiped away her tears. He wiped it away. May God wipe away those tears. I know some people are going through some real challenges of life. I know. I know. <laughs> we have been there. We know what it is. 
You don't even need to open your mouth. But God knows also. And he will send help unto you.